Welcome back, everybody. We're ready for Sound of Thunder Part 2. I hope you are excited. I am super excited. So our objectives today are similar to last time. We're interacting with sources in meaningful ways, such as note-taking and annotating, and we're going to keep making inferences and using evidence to support our understanding. I'm hoping that in, in your classroom, your teacher will have you speak to each other about the plot elements of a, of a short story using sentence stems. I'm not with you, so I can't, uh, I don't know how you're viewing this, if you're at home, if you're at school, if you're Zooming with your school, but hopefully you get a chance to talk because this is a super fun story to talk about. So just a reminder, we are dealing with plot elements, and so we know that the beginning of the story is called the exposition, and that's where we learn about characters, and it's where we figure out what the conflict is, and then the rising action is where the conflict gets worse and worse, and it gets more and more suspenseful, and we're not sure how it's going to turn out. So we are right in the middle of the story right now, so we will be watching the rising action happen, and we're going to see what goes on to make it more and more suspenseful as we read. And if you need to review the rest of the terms for the plot diagram, go ahead and pause the video and review those now. Okay, again, we are also looking at foreshadowing, where the author's giving hints about what's going to happen later, and we're talking a lot about suspense, that feeling of anxiety or anticipation as we try and figure out what is going to happen. It's that sense of mystery, and we can't wait to know. Last time when we were reading Eccles and the crew, Travis and Lesperance, they went in a time machine. They went back in time and they're hunting dinosaurs. And so we're super excited. They were ready to get out of the time machine and go hunt that T-Rex. And remember the T-Rex had been marked with paint so that they would know which one to kill. Because if they kill the wrong thing, it could change the whole future. So we are going to read 60 to 69 right now. And I'm going to ask you, what do you think I would ask you to jot about and why? And so instead of me telling you this is what you're going to jot about, I want you to get your handout, and your handout looks like this, right? And it's all marked up from the last time we were together, and thinking about characters, setting, problem, foreshadowing, suspense, the ending, figurative language, or mood. Which one of these things makes the most sense to jot about? So you don't have to decide yet. I'll read it, and then I want you to mark what you would jot. Like, what do you think is the most important? So we're going to read 60 to 69, and here we go. Oh, said Travis. Everyone stopped. Travis raised his hand. Ahead, he whispered, in the mist. There he is. There's his royal majesty now. The jungle was wide and full of twitterings, rustlings, murmurs, and sighs. Suddenly, it all ceased, as if someone had shut a door. Silence. A sound of thunder. Out of the mist, one hundred yards away, came Tyrannosaurus Rex. It, whispered Eccles, it, shh. Okay, so we read that. What do you think makes the most sense to jot about here? So I want you to pause the video, go back and read it again if you want to, or listen to me read it again, and make a decision. What are you going to jot about? And so on your paper, I want you to highlight what it is you're going to jot about, and then jot about it. And I'm going to keep going. So pause and complete that piece. Okay, we're going to repeat that for paragraph 70 to 79. I'm going to read those paragraphs and then you're just going to indicate what you what you would jot about, what you think is important enough to jot about. I gotta find my story again. I lost it. Oh, you're like, this old lady can't figure out the computer. Sorry guys. Okay. 70 to 79. It came on great oiled resilient striding legs. It towered 30 feet above half of the trees, a great evil god, folding its delicate watchmaker's claws close to its oily reptilian chest. Each lower leg was a piston, a thousand pounds of white bone, sunk in thick ropes of muscle, sheathed over in a gleam of pebbled skin like the mail of a terrible warrior. 
Each thigh was a ton of meat, ivory and steel mesh, and from the great breathing cage of the upper body those two delicate arms dangled out in front, arms with hands which might pick up and examine men like toys, while the snake neck coiled, and the head itself, a ton of sculptured stone, lifted easily upon the sky, its mouth gaped, exposing offensive teeth like daggers. Its eyes rolled, ostrich eggs empty of all expression save hunger. It closed its mouth in a death grin. It ran, its pelvic bones crushing aside trees and bushes, its taloned feet clawing damp earth, leaving prints six inches deep wherever it settled its weight. It ran with a gliding ballet step, far too poised and balanced for its ten tons. It moved into a sunlit arena warily, its beautifully reptilian hands feeling the air. Why, why, Eccles twitched his mouth. It could reach up and grab the moon. Shh, Travis jerked angrily. He hasn't seen us yet. It can't be killed. Eccles pronounced this verdict quietly, as if there could be no argument. He had weighed the evidence, and this was his considered opinion. The rifle in his hand seemed a cap gun. We were fools to come. This is impossible. Shut up, hissed Travis. Nightmare. Turn around, commanded Travis. Walk quietly to the machine. We'll remit one half your fee. I didn't realize it would be this big, said Eccles. I miscalculated. That's all. And now I want out. It sees us. There's the red paint on its chest. Okay. So, for 70 to 79, what would y'all jot about there? So, I want you to go back and read it again if you want to, and figure out what would you jot about there. So, go ahead, pause the video, highlight which thing you would be jotting about, and then make your jot, and we'll come back together. All right, hopefully you were able to make your jot. And now I want to ask you an inference question. And it actually goes all the way back to paragraph 60. I'm, instead of making you make an inference after each section, I'm just going to ask you one for both sections. How has Eccles' motivation changed from the beginning of the story? At the beginning of the story, he was going on this trip, and he was going to hunt something, and he had a reason for doing that. And now I want you to think, what is he feeling? What does he want at this point? And what's changed? So think about that. Your teacher may have your class talk about that in more depth before you actually write down your answer. So whatever your teacher tells you to do is what you should do. But when you have the answer that you want, go ahead and jot it right there in that box. And so pause the video and consider that question. Okay, hopefully your class was able to discuss that inference question and come to a consensus. And now we're going to read together 80 to 88, and we're going to kind of repeat that process. You're going to indicate what you're going to jot about and think about why that's the thing that you're going to jot about. And so here we go, 80 to 88. The tyrant, oh, I'll scoot it up a little for you. The tyrant lizard raised itself. Its armored flesh glittered like a thousand green coins. The coins, crusted with slime, steamed. In the slime, tiny insects wriggled so that the entire body seemed to twitch and undulate, even while the monster itself did not move. It exhaled. The stink of raw flesh blew down the wilderness. Get me out of here, said Eccles. It was never like this before. I was always sure I'd come through alive. I had good guides, good safaris, and safety. This time, I figured wrong. I've met my match and admit it. This is too much for me to get hold of. Don't run, said L'Esperance. Turn around. Hide in the machine. Yes, Eccles seemed to be numb. He looked at his feet as if trying to make them move. He gave a grunt of helplessness. Eccles! He took a few steps, blinking, shuffling. Not that way! The monster, at the first motion, lunged forward with a terrible scream. It covered 100 yards in six seconds. The rifles jerked up and blazed fire. A windstorm from the beast's mouth engulfed them in the stench of slime and old blood. The monster roared, teeth glittering with sun. Eccles, not looking back, walked blindly to the edge of the path. His limp, 
his gun limp in his arms, stepped off the path and walked, not knowing it, in the jungle. His feet sank into green moss, his legs moved him, and he felt alone and remote from the events behind him. Okay, so we read that section. Make sure that you, oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. So we're doing 80 to 88. Go ahead and figure out what is it that you were going to jot for that section. So we're not jotting the 42 stuff and we're not making inferences about the 42 paragraph. So go ahead, figure out and go and you can highlight. I'm unhighlighting because I had it highlighted from before. What from 80 to 88 would you highlight and jot about? And so go ahead and make your jot and then we'll come back together. Okay, hopefully you had time to jot. And your inference question for 80 to 88 is this. Why did Eccles step off the path? And so you will probably need to go back and read 80 to 88 again and figure off, figure out why Eccles stepped off the path and go ahead and jot that answer down. Your teacher may have your class discuss that. Okay, folks, we're gonna read 89 to 94 now and we're gonna repeat this. What am I gonna ask you to jot about and why? What do you think is important to jot about uh, for this section? So we left off and Eccles had stepped off the path and we were trying to figure out by inferring like why did he do that? And here we go. 89. The rifles cracked again. Their sound was lost in shriek and lizard thunder. The great level of the reptile's tail swung up lashed sideways. Trees exploded in clouds of leaf and branch. The monster twitched its jeweler's hands down to fondle at the men, to twist them in half, to crush them like berries, to cram them into its teeth and its screaming throat. Its boulder stone eyes leveled with the men. They saw themselves mirrored. They fired at the metallic eyelids and the blazing black iris. Like a stone idol, like a mountain avalanche, Tyrannosaurus fell. Thundering, it clutched trees, pulled them with it. It wrenched and tore the metal path. The men flung themselves back and away. The body hit ten tons of cold flesh and stone. The guns fired. The monster lashed its armored tail, twitched its snake jaws, and lay still. A fount of blood spurted from its throat. Somewhere inside, a sack of fluids burst. Sickening gushes drenched the hunters. They stood red and glistening. The thunder faded. The jungle was silent. After the avalanche, a green peace. After the nightmare, morning. Billings and Kramer sat on the pathway and threw up. Travis and Lesperance stood with smoking rifles, cursing steadily. In the time machine, on his face, Eccles lay shivering. He had found his way back to the path and climbed into the machine. Okay, folks, so you're finishing up there 89 to 94. So you may want to go back and read it again, but tell me what is it that you would jot about there? Did you learn something about characters, about the setting, about the problem, suspense? What are you jotting about for that section? Mood, not just moo, moo. We can fix that. So pause the video and go ahead and jot. All right, friends, hopefully you went and did your jotting and maybe you even turned and talked with your classmates to talk about what they jotted about and what you jotted about and everything like that. And now um, for our part two ending inference question, how did the death of the T-Rex impact the men? So how did the dinosaur dying make them feel or what, what effect did it have on them? So we get that whole section where they're hunting it and it dies and then it kind of describes their reaction. So I want you to go back, review that section, either listen to me read it all out again by rewinding or you can go back and read it again yourself, but answer that inference question and it's possible that your teacher might have you discuss it as well. So we're going to leave part two. I'm excited to finish the story with y'all in part three.